fun. It, it, it's, it, it is fun here. It's, it's fun in here. Alhamdulillah. Um, yeah, I guess, you know, the part about not having friends is kind of different, but yeah, we're still, we're enjoying a good time, alhamdulillah. And alhamdulillah, you know, um, just starting our, I guess, experience and the kids ex starting their experience. So we're going to start our question. How to maintain spiritual highs after Ramadan? And of course, it's quite, it, it's a quite, a common question that people ask and it's normal to have these downs and I would say these lapses after Ramadan where you feel like well what's happening and why am I not living the same type of spiritual high that I was in Ramadan and it becomes something that you would feel like you just regressed in your faith. You feel like you regressed in what you had really worked for a whole month to build. And then you start going back to your old self again, as if you didn't really do anything during Ramadan. And that's why it's important to recognize what this whole month is all about. So this whole month was really all about building a couple things. What we mean by building a couple things is really recognizing for Ramadan and what it was for. It was for ASAP, okay, just a little acronym, ASAP, right there, in where number one, of course, we know Ramadan was for abstinence from eating, drink, drinking, and sexual behavior, at least during the day of Ramadan. And number two, it's for spiritual engagement. We're going to talk about the spiritual engagement. So by recognizing what Ramadan is for, you're then recognizing the whole object for what that whole month was to train you into. So if you're not taking some of that training as a package for you to go and move on for the rest of the year, then you're missing out on the whole object of what Ramadan was for. Number three is allocating a allocating an amount of time and energy for dhikr slash masjid. I want you to look at these, these points because that's what we were really supposed to be doing. And let's look at the P, in which is for prioritizing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala over worldly matters. What all these different ASAPs were really for, number one, is to cultivate deep and spiritual connections. So you're looking at the abstinence of drinking and sexual behavior was really in order to bring about not just an abstinence of eating and drinking and doing these things, but it's in order to bring about a redirection in your focus on the positive act of cultivating a deep connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through prayer, reflection, and study i want you to think of well you're taking something away well that's really because you're putting something in so don't just take away but that was allah subhanahu wa ta'ala telling you take these things away in order to cultivate something new and that's the whole idea of what you're trying to practice. Number two, it's really it's the spiritual engagement is to prioritize spiritual nourishment. And it's, again, it's the whole idea is tahliya and tahliya. So what does that mean? Think of the word la ilaha illallah. When you look at the word la ilaha illallah, there are two sets of it. There's no God worthy of worship, but Allah. It's basically... Uh, um, taking something away and affirming something. It's negating something and it's affirming something. And that's the same thing. In order to take something away, it's not enough to just negate something, but you also have to bring about a new affirmation. You can't leave that space in vacuum, but you have to cultivate it and bring something instead. So right there, it's taking away a lot of the different entertainments by putting in a different nourishment for your soul, dhikr and Quranic recitation, instead of just abstinence abstinence from eating and drinking. And of course, what am I putting in? You're putting in seeking knowledge and community. I want you to focus on these two things, seeking knowledge and community, because it's not enough to just seek knowledge and live on your own. 
because you have to bring in this support group in order to basically help you stay on track. So what you're doing, yes, you're attending lectures, groups that strengthen your faith, connects you with a supportive community within the masjid, but you're also bringing in this community to help you stay on track with all of this package. And that's one thing that you had found supporting during Ramadan. So you come into the masjid and there's a group that you're probably eating iftar with. There's a group that's connecting you with the masjid and where you're listening to the, the recitation. You're probably listening to this, uh, even if it's a 20, 15 minute lecture and you're coming in. This support group is extremely important because we're human beings. And you know, what study actually say is that if you are with a successful person, your chances of becoming successful are, are actually raised by 15%. And at the same time, even if you are a successful person, if you hang out with a person that's not successful, your, your um, regression is actually going to go by 35% less. In other words, you're actually multiplying your regression and that's the, or the percentage of your regression. And that's the same thing in where just by hanging out with people that are connecting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by people that are working on their faith, even even if you are not at that level, I know in the beginning, shaitan will tell you, you know, you're not as religious as they are. You know that you're acting like a hypocrite by being around these religious people. And you know, you're not as religious as these people. But that's shaitan telling you that just by being around them, is Shafi'i said, he said, I'm not part of the Salihin, but just by being around the Salihin, around those that are righteous, is in itself a stand and a state in an embracement of success. I want you to look at that. Just by being around them, that's an embracement and a track and a start in setting your foot on the track of success. And this is important. So once you bring about this community and you would have the intention that it's really to avoid and help you avoid the worldly matters, to help you emphasize on the importance of living with intention, prioritizing, prior, prioritizing your life, that's actually setting ground on how to bring in your faith in place. Now, here's the thing. I, when you When you look at the abstinence spiritual we're going to go in more details for each and every single one so when we're looking at abstinence from eating drinking etc well that's in order to bring in more dhikr i want you to look at the word dhikr you know dhikr many people would just associate it with sufism and mystical behavior but that's really I would say narrowing down the word dhikr because it's a lot more broad than that. Because the word dhikr, I want to look at this word. So here Allah subhanahu in Surah Al-Kahf, I want to look at this word. Those, I'm going to, you know, give a, just a broad translation. Those that whose eyes were covered from my remembrance and they were not capable of hearing it. Now to look at the word dhikri, because the word dhikr, is it something that you say or is it something that you would hear? Because it was talking about their eyes being blocked away from the remembrance. But is it your eyes or is it a word of mouth that is being said or is it something that you hear? And that's why it's important to recognize that dhikr is visual dhikr, it's also audio dhikr, and it's also a word, it's a, an oral dhikr. All those areas would basically mean that dhikr is more, <clears throat> is more comprehensive than narrow it down to just a word of saying. It's something behavioral, in where the Prophet ﷺ actually said, The Prophet ﷺ said, in order to understand Ramadan, he said, whoever does not abstain from 
wrong and lies and blasphemy and even acting upon it, then the Lord Almighty is not in need for them to abstain from eating and drinking. In other words, fasting Ramadan was a lot more than just leaving and abstaining from eating and, and drinking. It was a actually something that we were supposed to invest in a behavior. We were supposed to understand that it's to cultivate a behavioral dhikr. The other part in where when you look at the audio dhikr, visual dhikr, an audio dhikr, it's to listen to what cultivates your heart. When we speak about listening to what cultivates your heart, whether we're talking about a lecture or whether we're talking about Quran or whether we're talking about what to invest in bringing in a better understanding. Talab al-ilm is extremely important. I know what many times we just feel good when we're hearing something spiritual. And of course, it feels so good when a lecture is basically acting as, I would say, a motivational lecture in where it feels like it's telling me that I'm just so good and I don't have to worry about people. It just It is just telling me of how good I am and there, therefore I don't have to worry about any change. Well, that's not what Islamic lectures are actually focused on. Islamic lectures are going to, one, going to tell you who you are, what you need to avoid, and how to grow in becoming a better person. I want you to think of a, a triangle. When you look at a triangle, and maybe I should have actually drawn something like a triangle in what you're going to be looking at. Let's draw a triangle. And in the triangle, I should have actually Really done it in a different color. But when you think of a triangle, you would look at these different stages. And in each and every single part of this triangle, you would, if you were to fit people inside this group and inside this segment of the triangle, you would fit in a lot more people than this stage, and then this stage, and then this stage. But I want you to ask yourself, in this group, what are they doing in order if we were to basically make this triangle as if it was really the different levels of Jannah? This is the highest level of Jannah. This is a lower level. And this is the lowest level of Jannah. Now, when you look at the lowest level of Jannah, think of just a Muslim. When you talk about a higher level, think of Mu'min here, think of Mutaqi here, and think of Muhsin here. And this is, this is important because if you want to grow in your level of Islam, you have to think of what do I need to change? In other words, am I going to find a lot of people that are like me? Am I here in search of friends or am I here in search of Number one, I don't want to say losing friends, but we want to say in search of me bringing in a new group of people that I would like to imitate, that I would like to take as an example in order to grow in my level of faith, in order to grow in my level in Jannah. So this is extremely important to keep in mind. So when we look at this area, what am I looking for? I'm looking for a group of friends, a group of people that basically cultivate within their life as a particular um, one, a particular environment that listens to things that are cultivating, let's say, expanding their and uh, broadening their vision to a visual dhikr, a visual dhikr. They're taking in a new set of priorities of what they want to consider as something that they want to see. In oral dhikr, what are they talking about? The group of people that are the highest level of jet their life is totally different than the ones that are on a lower level. Now, in order to bring that about, it's important to look at maintaining abstinence from eating, drinking, 
actual behavior by being, of course, training yourself after the month of Ramadan, being proactive in Shawwal, and remember taking in that, let's call it a shorter, a shorter uh, period for eating, uh, or at least fasting during the time of Shawwal, in where you're the process alam, you're remembering that whoever fasts. Um, Ramadan and follows it with six days of Shawwal, it will be as if they had fasted for the lifetime. Of course, there are numerous ahadith, but how to maintain spiritual engagement? Okay, we're going to fast our six days of Shawwal. Well, number one, finding your community. Now, what does that mean? Connecting to the masjid and connect with the active Muslims. Because remember, you are more likely to succeed when you're around successful people. So what do I do? So I'm connecting with the masjid. So what does that even mean? Take the time to never stop learning, broaden your spiritual vision, understanding of the world. And what if I cannot find this class in the masjid? Well, remember, engage in person. You try. If you cannot find it in a, cer a certain masjid, maybe you can bring about that activity yourself in the masjid. Maybe hey, bring in the Zoom that today we're going to be making and at least putting that class, Zoom class in the masjid. And after the class, we're going to be having food. We're going to be having some kind of an activity to bring in the sisters and all of that. That's going to create a community. And especially in a women's circle, more than the brother's circle, because as women, we are spiritual beings. So that's going to help bring in a community that's going to help bring in at least a community of spiritual engagement and that's going to be bringing in some form of family. Now you're replacing a different kind of an engagement with a spiritual engagement. And I want to recognize one thing. When you talk about you know, a masjid engagement, it doesn't mean that they're going to be angels. Yes, you're probably going to find a lot of drama. You're going to be finding a lot of envy. You're going to be, but that's because they're human beings. You have to basically lead these groups into what your, let's call it your, um, your ideal your ideal understanding of what actually makes a person be at the top level of Jannah means. Remember the triangle. So even if the group is not as ideal as you want them to be, you be the person to lead them into being ideal. Even if that's the Sheikha herself, not actually being the ideal person that I would want the or at least what I would know that what it means to be an ideal Muslim, you be the person to lead. You be the person to embrace that ideal position. Because remember, while you're bringing in that leadership, you're teaching yourself and you're focusing on what matters. How by joining in circles, reading Quran, reducing entertainment and body feeding and spend, or even spending more effort in, 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 of course, feeding your spirit and your soul and all of that. How to allocate time. I'm a mother. I'm a wife. I've got so many different things to do. Although, yes, in our different stages of, I would say, especially as a mother, when your children are younger, probably finding such time is going to be harder. So it's important to recognize your priority, but reduce the time that you have to reduce the time and figure out how much time and how much effort and how much energy you're spending on wrong things. Bring a piece of paper and just put in 
And how much time am I spending in doing one, two, three on probably maybe looking at your phone and let your phone, basically there's a notification, there's in the settings and where it tells you how much time you're spending on Facebook, on media, on entertainment, whatever it is. So look at the time and figure out how much time you're spending on screen time, figure those out. And also probably talking on the phone. It's a, and the good news is that on your phone, you could see that. So now probably learning how to manage these timings by reducing the time you spend. But I don't know how to. I tried and then I would, you know, just go back to my old behavior again. So that's where finding a group of circles to help you stay connected is important, especially the sisters that don't know how to be consistent with managing themselves, controlling themselves. They just, you know, she told herself that I want to reduce my, let's say, Facebook time or my social media time, but then she goes back to her old self again and just doesn't know how to. She told herself that she was going to put in more workout, but then she found herself doing it for a day or two, three, four days, and then she went back to her old eating habits, didn't know how to manage herself. So that's where finding a group of circle friends to help you stay connected. So in other words, connecting yourself with the message. But I was told that a woman's prayer at home is better than at the masjid. So here's the thing, is that this would actually be based on in, based on the circumstances that you're in. If connecting yourself with the masjid and you going to the masjid is going to help your Cultiv help you cultivate your iman better than you staying at home, your home is becoming a fitna, then going to the masjid is way better and more important for you. That's why the Prophet ﷺ had generally said the statement, do not prohibit and prevent the female servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from going and attending the masjid. Why? Because not everyone is basically going to be um, finding that the home is better for their dean. So if home- Oh yeah, and you, then and then everybody's in a different society too, exactly. right? Exactly. Everybody is in a different society. You're at a different position within your Iman. So if home is a fitna to you, where you're finding yourself, that you're wasting your energy, your efforts are basically wasted in the wrong thing, your dean is basically taking you into a regression at home, well, that's when you need to find the method in order to allocate more time, more effort, more at least um, allocating what your iman is needed to basically help you grow in your deen. So that's where I would say that no, go to the masjid because that's the community that is supposed to help you grow and connect with the dhikr, connect with your education in Islam, connect you with a support group. This is important. Not always is it important to find, here's one thing, you know, let, let me go back to my little, um, to my little triangle right there. So let me, I know it's a pink triangle. Let's make our triangle red this time. That way, here we go. We can see it. I want you to look at this. You know, a chef said that he, um, that while he was dying, he said he always wanted a friend. Here's one thing. The higher you grow into the, this triangle, the less friends you're capable of finding. Why? Because the less people there are to basically be at the level that you had grown in or you had grown into. Of course, when you're at the lower level, you're gonna find a lot of people that are like you. So you go to the masjid, for example, or at least outside of the masjid, you're gonna find a lot of people walking in the mall, you know, a lot, find a lot of people that are, she's wearing a hijab, but hey, she's worried about her nails. She's worried about her shopping. She was worried about, she's a, she's a Muslim, all right? But you're gonna find a lot of people that are finding, following the trend. But if you basically leave this area of trend, you're going to find less people caring about what you care about, probably studying Islam, probably following lectures. And guess what? The trendy lectures, you're going to find a lot of people following these kind of people. And then if you grow in your deep 
skiing and you're like following the type of lectures that I would say buttery lectures. What I mean by buttery lectures, the lectures that are going to be boring, but they're going to have a lot of vision. Those types of lectures, they basically have less people really following them. Why? Because those lectures, they're not focused on bringing in motivational and type of talk that's trying to make you feel good, but that's broadening your perspective. Remember in university, there are these lectures, these professors that if you were to attend their lectures, you would get your grades, a lot of grades, A's and B's, but there are these lectures or professors that you would get C's in them, but, um, but they're the ones that would actually give you the real butter and those that would get those grades Yes, they didn't actually get the best grade, but those professors were wanting you to really broaden your capacity and your capabilities in knowing at least the, the areas that make you strong within that field. That's exactly what it is. In where these areas, these types of lectures, these types of lectures are really these kind of boring classes, but those are the buttery ones. You're not going to find a lot of people really enjoying those lectures, all right? And you go up at a higher level, you're going to be finding not only, I would say, not only the lecture piece of it, but even when you're talking about, let's take away our little right there triangle, and let's talk about the spiritual part of it. In the spiritual part of it, in the lower level, you're going to find a lot of people that basically come to the masjid, okay, they would come to the masjid really, yeah, they're always looking for the pizza in the masjid, they're always coming there um, to make sure that it's going to be a fun attendance, you're going to find these people at the lowest level. All right. So in such situations where, yeah, these people are, you know, coming here, but you're going to find another group that, no, they're actually silent and not necessarily engaging with what everybody is engaging in. They're a different group. Those are usually sitting probably at the corner, making their tasbih, making their Quran recitation, and those are really small groups. Make it into, you know, this study. I want you to go to the masjid and just look at the majority and what they're doing. You're going to find a smaller group that's probably sitting down, reading their Quran, probably holding the tasbih, making their dhikr, and then you're going to find even a smaller group that is barely recognized, a smaller group that's barely recognized, and not many people would usually find or even recognize these groups. These people, they would be, they're usually just uh, mm, the people that are probably sitting in a corner and most people would ignore, they would barely engage with the rest of uh, the rest of the people in the masjid. They're always silent. They're always the invisible people in the masjid. Those are really up high right there. I'm not asking you to jump really up high right there because it's probably going to be something really hard for you to practice. But I would say try in growing one in doing two things. Number one, in growing from the group that's here to the group that's here. And where? Finding a group of circles to help you stay connected and of course by reducing the amount you spend on wrong things what you're seeing or what you're hearing or what you're doing and so how do I do that well allocate time for Quranic recitation find a group of circles stay connected to, to your Quran and they can reduce the spend with the amount of time how do I prioritize what I need to do here's this acronym Number one, 
D-N-A-I-M. Remember, how you prioritize is really in saying that your D is your number one priority. Number two, allocating time for your health, for your nerves. How much time are you eating? You know, right now we're seeing obesity within the Muslim community and especially with women. And that is actually really dangerous because when you're looking at obesity, that actually tells us that we are not finding the right time of in the right foods and we're spending a lot of time in feeding our our bellies than actually feeding our souls. In other words, looking at how we feed ourselves and how we take care of our health and take care of our life is our second priority. Once we prioritize and we take away a lot of such feeding, we're going to find more time to feed our souls. Remember the part you're learning how to reduce the time that you're spending on eating and drinking to learning how to spend more time for spiritual for spiritual elevation. That's the same thing that Ramadan was there. Ramadan was actually to help you manage such time that, or figuring out reducing time in or reducing time on in engagement and eating and drinking and entertainment to finding more time on spirituality spiritual enhancement. Number three, aql, in where how to enhance my mental, uh, my mental health. It's not by mental health. I'm reducing all the amount of, that I would get anxiety and all of that. No, in Islam, by finding in more time to cultivate in broadening your 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 vision, your perspective on how you see the world by getting the right ilm, the right knowledge. That's the way to cultivate a better mental health. Mental health, your aql, where you're learning how to broaden your perspective, you're learning how to bring about stability in considering your priorities, that that's going to help you bringing in a better understanding for your mental health, a better ilm, a better spiritual engagement is going to bring you a better mental health, a better mental stability. And number four, erd, family chastity when you're talking about chastity where islam is telling you well, i want you to focus on your hijab focus on that engagement with the guides and where it is making sure that it's based on what allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had regarded as the that that say the regulated uh, engagement with the opposite sex, and where that's in order to bring about a better focus on your mental focus, and certain certainly a better chastity, and in order to even reduce. And I want to look at this one when you lower your gaze. That's going to make you see your spouse as the best person for you. You're going to, you know, here's the thing, is that the more broadened, bro more broadened, and the broadened your vision, at least in, if you're looking at all these different areas of fitna, you're not going to be satisfied in, with what you have. And that's why in order to help you recognize what you have, it's reducing all those areas of what you're feeling and seeing that you are not basically having. And that's one thing. What do I mean by that? Right now, during our age of, of course, social media and phone, we're seeing this image in where it's bringing in less and less satisfaction. It's bringing in more fantasy of what actually is coming in within our society. And at many times, we're seeing an area of fact 
fantasy and not a reality. So it could be just a plain cup of coffee, for example, but then we're seeing it like it's bringing in all these different fantasized image. And it's the same thing when it's relationships that are posted on social media of happy relationships, but in reality, they're actually just a, a show for the social media and not really the reality of what it is. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is basically teaching us to maintain your family, one, lower your gaze. To maintain your family, learn on how to reduce talking about it outside of your circle, of your circle of family. Because if you're bringing in too many people within your your orbit of family, then you're you're basically going to be bringing in more people that don't belong in your area of orbit. Understanding those orbits are really important to reduce the engagement of others within the orbit and reducing the area of drama. Because by reducing the area of drama, you're reducing the area of trauma. So what do I do? You're basically prioritizing your family, understanding that circle. You're taking away the envy. You're taking away a lot of trauma by considering that your family in your engagement is important as to what you need to do. And you're focusing on one, bringing in the dean, bringing in their health and bring in their mental health within your family to make sure that you yourself are living in stability. Number four, man, wealth and property, learning how to prioritize necessity over when we're talking about needs and wants, because there's never going to be an end to want unless you recognize that satisfaction is important in order to live on the needs and don't run after the wants because they're just going to let you keep going farther and farther down in dunya. So what Ramadan was about in reducing the amount of money spent on the wants and to learn how to keep it to the needs and not constantly running after the wants, how to focus on area of family, to spend time, quality time during iftar, and how to make that time. Let's find that time in making a circle and communication with our own family. How to recognize, how to cultivate this quality time to bring about mental health, how to consider eating, enough to bring about good health, how to bring about our deen and connect to the masjid, refilling our spiritual need. This was not something I did. I want you to look at this one. So the Salihin used to say, Man arada sahiban fallahu yakfi, woman arada mu'nisan فَالْقُرْآنُ يَكْفِيهِ وَمَنْ أَرَادَ غِنًا فَالْقَنَاعَةُ تَكْفِيهِ وَمَنْ أَرَادَ مَوْعِظَةً فَالْمَوْتُ يَكْفِيهِ وَمَنْ لَمْ يَقْنَعْ بِهَذِهِ الْأَرْبَعْ فَاللَّهُ يَهْدِيهِ Here's what I did. I went to my friend Bard, yep, AI, and I put these words and I said, write this into an English poem. So this is not me. And it basically translated it into a beautiful poem like this. If you need a friend, a listening ear, know that Allah is always near. If you need company to chase away the blues, the Quran offers timeless truths. If you seek richness, vast and grand, true wealth is found in contentment at hand. If you crave advice, a path to take, remember death is for everyone's sake. But if these words bring you no ease, may Allah guide you in grace grant you peace. This is not me. This is AI. So I thought it was fair to say this, but I loved how the words 
that basically were written in Arabic this way, where it's actually beautifully said here. And that's really beautiful because, of course, I even, I, even we could use AI. <laughs> Yeah, I absolutely loved it. I cannot generate oh, words like this, to be honest. You know, I don't think my English level is at this level to uh, beautifully translate such words. I think it's fair to say. And, and that's the thing. If you, you know, when you look at yourself, I, a lot of times, especially rave words, they would always say, you know, I'm not finding a friend and I'm, I can't find someone to understand me and I need somebody to talk to. I need someone. It's so that's the thing, is that remember, you need a listening ear, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is there, is the, always near. I know sometimes it, you just want to ventilate, you just want to, hey, just talk to somebody. So here, if you need company, remember, the Quran will give you all the different advice that is necessary to help you grow. And if you- You know, can I hear a story? Sorry. Share it. Go ahead, Noor. I'd love to hear it. Okay, there was uh, somebody who was going, I think, for Umrah, and they told me that they saw this um, uh, this person who was cleaning the masjid um, in in Medina, and he, I I don't know, did I hear this in your class? I can't even remember. It's one of them. But anyway, um, he was like talking to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he was cleaning uh, Masjid al-Nabawi. He, are you, are you hearing me? I can hear you. I'm, I'm just listening. Okay. So he was, he was just talking to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he was cleaning the Masjid and subhanAllah, just like a conversation. Just like a conversation, exactly. And this is what I would like to say is that, you know, even when you really feel lonely, you really feel like you need company and you were put down by so many people and it's going to happen. You know, as women at many times, we just want to talk. You know, I, I love this. I love this, um, um, uh, this, uh, it was a lecture talking about the difference between the way men's social network is and the way women's social network and the way that they actually would ventilate themselves. So um, for men, they're looking for a solution to the problem. So they'll talk about a problem and here it is, they'll just say, well, here's, here's the answer to the problem. So the answer to the problem is basically what they're looking for. But for women, they're not looking for a solution. They're really looking for somebody to basically just pat them on their back and just say, I understand. And if you were to bring them solution, they'll basically say, like, what? No, I'm here to ventilate. I'm not here looking for a solution. So they'll basically start looking for a listening ear. And this is really important to keep in mind that many times when you're looking for a listening ear, you're just sharing your information. Here's what happens. If that person is listening to your information, you are just becoming more vulnerable. Why? Because the more transparent you become to people and your information becomes so exposed you basically had raised the chances of different different people abusing this information and using it against you and using this information and perhaps finding ways to sneak and it only takes one thief or one evil person to sneak into your home and steal all your valuables. You don't have to have a million people actually jumping into your home. It just takes one person. And that's the, that's the necessary thing to keep in mind is that if you really need to stay strong, you need to learn how to reduce that ventilation. And that's why, that's why, 
when you read Surah Yusuf, I only complain my sorrows, my sadness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? It's basically to chase away the blues. I basically would go back to the Quran, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and that's the way to basically let you grow. Think of that triangle. You're reducing the areas of ventilation, the areas of, let's call it circle of friend sometimes, and you're putting in that circle of friend to one, help you grow. Yes, you need a friend, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Those are the people that are living in the top level of that triangle. They're the second group of people. They're looking for a company. They're looking for information. They're basically in that second level. They're taking that in. And for those that are in order to grow in that, that triangle, and then it's like, okay, you need wealth. You're seeking richness. Well, just learn how to be satisfied with what you have and of course you're seeking um you're seeking how do i grow well remember the best way is to recognize that hey there's a purpose that preceded your that uh, preceded your existence so remember to work towards that don't look at all these people that are around you take a moment Take those times to go to the cemetery and just read these dates on those tombstones and just take the time to recognize that that's what you need to work for. That's exactly what you need to recognize, that this is a moment coming at you. So if you need peace, take the moment to recognize the purpose, recognize with the things that you have, recognize the words and the advice in the Quran. And that's what will bring you to recognizing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But I still need friends. I still am a human being. I'm not telling you don't look for friends. And certainly we're human beings. We need friends. We need people to have around. Certainly look at this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was teaching and telling the Prophet, look at this. What's the story behind this? The story is the Prophet was doing da'wah, but he wanted to bring in the chieftains of Mecca as well. Because, of course, just like any other group, in where, um, of course, if the rich people come in your circle, they become a trend and they bring in a lot of people who are taking them as role models. So the Prophet, ﷺ, he wanted to bring in these people because he knew that by bringing in these people within the Muslim community, that these people would bring in a lot of their followers so the rich people the rich chieftains in mecca when the prophet ﷺ was doing da'wah to them they said well what we see your followers are really the likes of the lower class like Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, like Ammar ibn Yasir, like Suhaib al rumi those are considered the lower class those are considered the ex-slaves, those are considered the poor, poor, poor community and not the rich hierarchy, noble community. So therefore, why should we join you? In other words, we're just then going to be considered part of the lower class than the upper class. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed this ayah. وَاصْبِرْ نَفْسَكَ مَعَ الَّذِينَ يَدْعُونَ رَبَّهُمْ بِالْغَدَاتِ وَالْعَشِ يُرِيدُونَ وَجْهَهُ وَلَا تَعْدُ عَيْنَاكَ عَنْهُمْ تُرِيدُ زِينَةَ الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَلَا تُطِعْ مَنْ أَغْفَلْنَا قَلْبَهُ عَنْ ذِكْرِنَا وَاتَّبَعَهَ وَهُوَ كَانَ أَمْرُهُ فُرُطًا I want you to look closely at this ayah. 
I'm going to read it here and be patient and put yourself patient with those that would invoke their Lord Almighty during the night and during the day and during the night. They would seek the the face of their Lord Almighty and don't turn your eyes away from them, seeking the worldly matters and don't obey whose heart was pacified away from my remembrance and they would follow their own desires and their matters are nothing but furuta, where it's going to be from one regression after the other. I want you to look at this one in where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not teaching the Prophet sallam, alone, but he's teaching all of us in order for you to grow in your faith, there has to be some level of patience where you would basically connect with those that are wanting to invoke the Lord Almighty, learn, connect with the Lord Almighty throughout the day and throughout the night. In the beginning, it might feel boring. In the beginning, it might feel like, well, I'm connecting with these people at the masjid, but it doesn't feel so fun. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling you, I know it doesn't feel fun in the beginning, but that's because when you don't feel so much fun, that means, you know, if you were to diagnose the situation, if you're not feeling entertained by dhikr, well, that's because your body was so engaged in dunya that it's actually finding the road to akhirah so boring. So it isn't until you would, I want to look at the word wasbir, it isn't until you start forcing your nafs to endure, let's call it the boringness of taking the steps to akhirah, will it start finding, will it start finding that path to akhirah as entertaining? You have to force your nafs, even though it doesn't fully like engaging on that path or in that path, you have to force it. That's why Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala was telling you, wasbir, you got to be patient. Why? What is it going to find? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling you, وَلَا تَعْدُعَيْنَكَ عَنْهُمْ Don't let your eyes turn away just by wanting dunya. So what should I do? لَا تُطَعْمَنْ أَغْفَنَا قَلْبَهُ You're going to find more friends certainly wanting dunya. And you're going to find more of those friends. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling you, don't obey them. Those whose hearts were away from dhikr, whose hearts were away from remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they're just following their own desires and what those people are going to be finding in where in the start, it's going to be going to a coffee shop. Then it's going to be wanting to listen to music. Then it's going to be wanting to engage in some form of talk with guy friends. And then it's going to be just normal conversations. But then later on, it's going to be different. It's going to be a romantic relationship. And then later on, it's going to be, well, look at you. You really need to change your outfit. You really need to change your appearance. And then you really need to change your area and circle of friends. And then you're going to find yourself really changing the conversations, who you are, what you are. And then it's going to be amruhu furuta. You're going to be regressing more and more and more and more. And it's going to be an endless downfall away from the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, inna nahnu nazzalna alayka al-Qur'ana tanzila. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling you that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had revealed the Qur'an in a revelation so so what you need to do is that you need to be patient in taking and absorbing the rulings of the Lord Almighty and you need to connect. Don't obey and don't embrace those that are at sin or those that are in disbelief. You need to take away certain orbits and you need to invest 
واذكر اسم ربك بكرة وأصيلا invest in ذكر throughout the night and throughout the day and throughout Out the night, make sujood, make tasbih, laylan tawila. Throughout the night, you've got the time to do dhikr. And remember, these people, they're looking for, let's call it instant entertainment, instant, instant gratitude, instant type of engagement but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling you what they're leaving behind is a long heavy day full of a lot of things that will happen on judgment day Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells you we know what they're looking for because we had created them and we had basically created even their instincts so in that situation recognize that what you really want to take is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as your path. So be patient in building spiritual relationships, in personal, in spiritual relationships. So how to enhance that? Number one, things to help you with. Fast regularly, white days, moon days. The white days are basically the full moon days. Fasting Mondays, Thursdays to help you regulate how you Put in, you know, that Ramadan inspiration. Number two, learn how to donate and practice the giving up on dunya to seek the, the hereafter, to give up on what you spend on in money, the amount of spending money probably in dunya and the amount of what you take in in dunya because it feels good to buy. It feels good to contain because we would think of ourselves that if we were to contain dunya, that's going to give us the feeling that we are really bringing in our chances of life expectancy. We're living in a mirage. So by giving up on what you bring in and contain of dunya, you're basically bringing in a containment and hope in Athera. And that way, you would recognize the Prophet said, no money that is given up for a donation is reduced. Why? Because what you're cultivating is really the value that you would put in on the inside and the value would get in the akhirah. And of course, if you have no money to donate, participate in in, in putting in an effort, helping others, probably giving support in different ways. And there's nothing more important than helping your own family, your own mother, and certainly bring in and create a spiritual family at the masjid. Even if you cannot find one, you start one. And of course, that way we will basically take in all the package that Ramadan was there to teach us in bringing in number one from feeding in, 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 in our stomachs to feeding in our souls, from feeding in our own individual cells to bringing in a spiritual community, from bringing in more money to bringing in more value, from bringing in just dunya to bringing in akhirah. That's what Ramadan was all about. So to train and bring in that spiritual cultivation, don't leave the masjid, connect to the masjid, don't leave the spiritual family, but make a spiritual family. Don't leave that area of containment of akhirah, but bringing it in. That's what Ramadan was all about. And this is how you make the best of Ramadan. This is how you make the lesson of Ramadan be learned, cultivated, and grown. Barakallahu fikum. I hope I answered that question. I know it's not always easy, but inshallah, we will learn how to grow little by little 
And inshallah, we will be at least these friends even beyond all those borders and all those seas. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bring our hearts together in where we're doing the dhikr together. We're doing the reminder together. We're doing all that spiritual connection even beyond borders. And Rabbi yahfadkum jami'an. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I absolutely love this bard um, uh, this bard poem. So I should yeah, not that, that actually have so the credit for it. <laughs> See, bar is not that bad after all. Subhanallah. And this is it, inshallah. If there are any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Jazakallah khair. Do you guys have any questions? Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. How are you, Habibi? Good to hear your voice, alhamdulillah. After so long, My I can tell you that I'm a guy. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, my pleasure. Alhamdulillah. How are you? How's your family? Did you adjust, adjust there? Alhamdulillah, we're mm -hmm. loving it here. Quite hot, but um, we're loving it. And Alhamdulillah, it's a it's a beautiful place. Uh, very multicultural. So I love multicultural because I love learning about other cultures. I love, mm -hmm. um, I guess, see people from different backgrounds. So I love that here so i guess you know in america it was very multicultural but here i think it's even more multicultural so yes we didn't uh we didn't lose on that but um alhamdulillah it's um it's a beautiful place habibi the last last slide you did i didn't i didn't take a picture with that i love that oh, the, the, oh sure i i will actually the last slide i will bring it up inshallah inshallah there you go uh the last one this one. Jazakallah khairan Wa iyyakum. So if there are any other questions, um, I'd be happy to answer it. Uh, you <laughs> will, I will read. And the sister is wanting to read the poem. Exactly. We have to read that one on and on and on. It's so beautiful because, you know, it's, it's, it's important to remember. Yeah. So if, and it, it was just so cool to, um, you know, that Imam Shafi, he, um, you know, subhanAllah, that he said that. I, I remember you had said that before, but, um, you know, subhanAllah, you know, that um, even he, and he was one of the greatest scholars. Right. He was one of the greatest scholars. And, you know, he died to 105 Hijriya, which is during the time of, I don't want to say Tabi'in. Well, Tabi'in, Tabi'in, at least were still living there. And the Prophet ﷺ actually said, قرني ثم ثم The Prophet ﷺ said that the best era is my era, and then the era that follows it, and then the era that follows it. So in other words, he was actually living in the best of the eras. You know, how many eras we're right now, um, after the Prophet ﷺ by, we're looking at almost 32 eras after the Prophet ﷺ. All right. So in your, if you're looking at almost 32 eras after the Prophet ﷺ, um, we're really far. Um, we're really far from from that. So it's 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 really um, it, it's really you know to tell us that yes, we're really far from having the best eras, the best generations. But at least remember that even if Shafi'i. Um, even though he was living in a better era than the era that we're living in. And he too was looking for a friend during that time. So expect not to find a friend during your time. So the best thing to do is really find a friend in the Quran, or really find a friend in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, really finding a friend inside, which is your satisfaction. And, yeah, even if you, and of course, the older you get, the less friends you'll find. Why? Because you had become more mature. You recognize um, by, you know, with experience that the broadened the broaden your circle of friends, the more friends you have, the more problematic. Why? Because if you're having too many people within your circle, then you didn't learn how to sift the good ones to be within your circles. Then if you're putting in just so many different contaminated 
things in your circle, contaminated people in your circle, then your circle is basically going to be a contaminated circle. What you need to put it in inside your circle are really the sifted people and what i mean yeah. by the sifted people the people that cultivated deen the people that cultivated akhlaq that cultivated spirituality that cultivated a good um a, a good uh, righteousness, let's say it that way. Remember, let's look at that that A again in order for us to learn what area of circle of friends that we need to we need to make sure that, that these people are not people of dunya, not people away from dhikr, not people that are just following their desires. We need to make sure that there are people that are putting in behavioral dhikr, oral dhikr, visual dhikr, and of course, certainly there are people that are cultivating a vision based on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if yeah. these people are not the true orbit that you're putting in your circle of your circle that is surrounding you, then you're just you're just really making you more vulnerable. You're making your deen really at a level more susceptible to lose you losing your deen by making yourself more susceptible. Can furuta? You're putting your in danger. So Allah subhanahu wa taala is teaching you. No, you cannot. He's telling you, don't obey the, whose heart was away. How do I know if their hearts were away? Well, you could see it away. You could see their behavior. Their behavior is yeah. speaking of what their hearts are cultivating. How do I know what their behavior is? They don't know how to stop their own desires. They don't know how to put a stop to their to their in, uh, entertainment. They're just after entertainment. They're just, and that's a thing, is that yeah, when, sometimes uh, you know, because you 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 said before that, you know, um even if you don't feel like you're a part of the Salahin, like imitate them. Absolutely. Right? E even if Absolutely. you think it's boring in the beginning, you know, a lot of mm -hmm. sisters, they say, you know, uh, I don't know, these classes are not for me or something or like, you know, it's, it's, it's boring, you know, <laughs> or, or it's, not because if you got used to that, like you said, if you got used to the, the shopping, the makeup, the hanging out, the, all these kind of things, then that is going to be boring to you, right? It's exactly and, like if you're constantly yeah. eating junk food, healthy food is going to feel boring. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. your brain was so used to all the all the sugar that all you're the just pizza and the cake and the cookies and the, yeah. Absolutely. And that's the same thing, exactly the same way. If you're constantly just using wow. and eating all the carbs, your body is just use feeding on all of that. You're going to be basically finding healthy food as boring. And that's the same thing. The consumption, if you're constantly consuming entertainment, you're going to find yourself not capable of being satisfied with what is healthy. And that's exactly the same thing. Even when we're talking, we're not just talking about belly consumption, but even when we're talking about mental consumption, if you're constantly just looking for entertaining talks, you know, or nasheed, it's like, I just want something nasheed. You remember when um, even during our early times, and let's call it the teenage time, it was just wanting to listen to Nasheed, etc. But once you mature, you recognize that the Nasheed, you know, you would, I would say, outgrow this time of feeding, I guess, this type of Nasheed. And then you would say, you know, I need something to broaden my ilm. I need something to broaden my perspective. I need something that helps me see the world not in an imaginary fantasy, but I need something to help me build in a foundation where I would grow and become mature 
in the way that I would practice my Islam. So that's where... That's why Gems of Light is awesome, mashallah. Alhamdulillah. That's why whisper, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells you whisper, there's no way that you're going to grow unless you engage in a form of sabr. What is sabr? Patience. Patience doesn't, it, it, it's not a word of entertainment. Patience actually means that there is some form of endurance. Effort, right? Yeah. Effort. Yeah, yeah. Ever, that there yeah. is going to be some pain that you're going to be feeling, some, uh, some let's call it a, not only a pain, but some feeling. Sacrifices. That you, sacrifices. You're going to feel some pain. Yeah. It's going to feel boring. It's going to feel like, oh, why do I have to do this? Oh, this doesn't feel so happy. And it isn't until you start learning that feeling and how to glide think of those that a person you know when you first learn skating or when you first learn how to swim you, you oh, yeah, you're drowning true. and exactly you're drowning but you put the effort the, in, i mean right you no we remember put the effort first, yeah. absolutely remember when you first learned how to swim you know you're first learning how to swim and you're you know, putting in the water, you're like, oh, that's it. I'm going to never want to learn how to swim again. And you <laughs> drown a couple times and the, you're bringing in that water and you're like, oh, and the water's going into your nose and you're like, oh my God, I nearly died and you nearly suffocated. But I then, was bored, so I don't remember that much. But anyway. <laughs> oh, you, okay, well, I, I'll tell you. I'm, I'm I was just kidding. I'm just kidding. You know, what? I was only, I was six years old when I learned how to swim and I could remember. But you remember, the, yeah. I remember the water going into your nose, the water going into your throat and same thing. And when you were learning how to skate, you're falling and you're scratching yourself on all these abrasions and on your, and uh, you know, on the painful things and the painful falls, all these different things. But is isn't until you really master how to Hold in your breath to learn how to swim, how to balance yourself to learn how to glide while you're skating, while you're biking, all of that. You fall and you will trip and you will drown in the beginning, but wait till you master it. That's when you will just enjoy the art of the kid. I will call it the art of the kid, just like the art of skating, that's like the art of swimming, just like the art of being within that field. You really have to be patient in the beginning. You're going to drown in the beginning. You're going to fall. You're going to hurt yourself. You're going to feel like this is getting painful, but you have to be patient until you master the art of listening to the words, of letting the words go into your heart, of letting your ears listen to the dhikr, of letting your vision enjoy how to take away all the blurry visions of entertainment to seeing the light in the beginning, you can't see the light. It's too blurry. I can't see the light. It's too blurry. I don't see anything. Well, that you can't see anything because your brain and your eyes are still focused on other things. It isn't until you learn how to take away all those visions from all such entertainment that you'll be capable of seeing the light. I can't hear the vicar. It's boring to hear it. Not until you learn how to take away all the songs and all the music and all that stuff that you will still and you will you will learn how to enjoy the dhikr and the sound of not the music, but the sound of dhikr will start becoming clearer in your ear, stronger in coming to your heart, and all the different sounds of music will then disappear, and only the words of dhikr will be coming near. And then that wasn't Bart, that was me. So I take the credit for it. Anyhow. <laughs>
Correct. And not until that the words, when they would basically become, you're taking away all those friends, they're taking you into the entertainment, and you're only having a circle of friends that is taking you into a spiritual, a spiritual circle. That's when you will find that your heart is actually cultivating another circle. It's a circle of light, not a circle of just some form of entertainment. It's a circle of light. It's a vision of light. It's a listening of bright, beautiful words that are making everything just see the light of a lost planet island. And that is only when you will see that you have grown from this area to this area and even farther in the level of SN. Remember, it's basically growing in your vision to your vision from your mental vision to your heart vision to your spiritual vision mental vision heart vision all to connected the soul vision and that's where you would grow little by little just patient. it doesn't happen from day one it happens with a lot of cultivation Go ahead, my dear Sayida. Assalamu alaikum. Can you hear me? I can hear you, my dear. Yes. <laughs> okay. So um, I have one question. I, um, I heard like in one lecture, I don't know, maybe some months back, and the uh, there was a sheikh and he was talking about uh, the, he was talking about living the zikr living the zikr so i just mm -hmm. want to ask like in our daily lives like especially for example uh, take me as an example as a mother and as a caretaker and doing everything for you know he, running here and there how to practice living the zikr like all the time throughout the day throughout the night um there we know and, yes so the Prophet actually said, <clears throat> Each of you is responsible and you'll be held accountable for that. Now, to actually be responsible, remember when we talked about the behavioral thicket, let's actually put that in place. So when we say dhikr, it doesn't necessarily mean you're just constantly doing la ilaha illallah, all of that dhikr. That's, that's oral dhikr. But the other dhikr, I want you to look at this. When you spend time maybe changing your baby's diaper, maybe with your husband even, you're putting in food for your husband, you're probably um, working in washing the laundry. That is part of dhikr. To maintain your home, that is the care. To maintain, to clean your kids' clothes, to clean yourself, to cleanse your the, the table, to cleanse your, your kitchen, to wash the dishes, that is part of the care. That's a priority too. So to think of it as, oh, it's a wasted energy, dear, it's not wasted energy. That's the dhikr. You can... Okay cultivate cultivate in probably using that time as well maybe listening to a lecture while you're doing it well good for you but you don't necessarily have to do that but that's a plus but even when you're cooking a meal for your children a meal for your husband you're bringing in the prophet actually said said even a morsel of food that a husband would put in his uh, in his wife's mouth that that's that's a that's a hasana that they would get that's a good deed same thing when you're actually preparing the breakfast for your husband you're wiping the table or whatever it is that's the care my dear 
That's the key to maintaining your house, to maintaining your health, to maintaining your husband, to making your husband happy, your children, giving them the right akhlaq. You're basically teaching your children, looking at their homework, cleaning their clothes, helping them discipline. All of that is dhikr, my friend. All of that All right. is dhikr. It's, <clears throat> it's not wasted energy. When the Prophet ﷺ tells you that even a morsel of food that you would put, the Prophet ﷺ said that the best sadaqah, the best donation that would, one would give is basically the donation that he's donating to help his own family, his own wife, his own children. That's the best sadaqah. In other words, before you would give sadaqah outside, at maintaining your family, making sure that you're putting your kids in good Islamic schools, in basically giving them the healthy food that they need, that that's basically the best sadaqah that you could give. That's the same thing. So taking care of and putting the effort and making sure you're doing your priority at home is basically the good dhikr that you're investing. It's not wasted energy, my dear. Okay, yes, yes, yes. Uh, just the thing is that, uh, so it all depends on the intention you have, right? For like everything you are doing it for the sake of Allah. And exactly. this, it, it makes like everything streamlined towards the path of uh, earning hasanat. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, <laughs> at the end of the day, once... Well, why are you, for example, maintaining the house? Well, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked me to maintain the house. Because the Prophet said that it's part of Iman to maintain, to clean, etc. All of that is basically the kid. Hmm. But it's good, like I said, in the background, let the kids hear you, for example, listen to a lecture, maintain yes. your deep. Growing your perspective. Oh, yeah, Listen. like being the good example for them. Like, Absolutely. yes, that's, that's a plus, right? <laughs> that's definitely a plus. And, and I try to do it. Alhamdulillah, I try to do it. Alhamdulillah, I'm sure we Alhamdulillah. all, you all try to do it. I'm proud of all of you. Rabbi yahfadkum jami'an. And let's see, Munira wants to say something. Go ahead, my dear. Okay. Yeah, mashallah, beautiful lecture. I had a question. So um, I think we were like just having like a conversation just like with a group of sisters, most of like, you know, like what we intend to carry on in terms of doing like um, after Ramadan, you know, like those acts of good days that we want to continue. So one of the things that I saw that was recurring I mean, most of the sisters in the group that I'm in are kind of like new Muslims, like they're reverts. And I think uh, a challenge for them that most of the people expressed was like, you know, like maintaining modesty and covering, especially like even the summer months are coming. So I was just wondering, like, if you can give maybe some practical tips, maybe, you know, a little bit in well, detail or how, you know. You know. Right. I think. In order, you know, for the spiritual side, um, definitely when you're looking at the physical side, the physical side, it's sometimes pushing you towards one end, but it really starts with recognizing that what you are really investing in is really the spiritual side. So once we recognize that the pain that our physical body might be feeling, whether it's enduring heat or whether it's enduring different falls, etc. It's really a way to grow in our spirituality. And that's the same thing when you remember the falls. It's like, yeah, your body is feeling the pain, but then you recognize that there's something to look forward to, which is feeding our soul which is feeding our spirituality. And of course, the Prophet ﷺ had actually said that the more effort 
that one puts in into something, the higher the rank. So if, if you are enduring more effort or more pain, probably because of the heat or probably because of maybe just different different hardships, maybe the hijab is too tight or maybe it's too warm in the area that you're in, but you're enduring more effort, the higher the rank. Why the higher the rank? Because basically you had you had invested more effort in order to let your spiritual side grow stronger. That doesn't mean you make it harder on yourself, but that simply means that it's cultivate in more endurance. Think of not the pain, but think of the gain. And this is important. Oh, that's a, I like that. Yeah, don't think of the pain, but think of the gain. Don't think of that amount of endurance and the amount of uh, the amount of oh, it's so hot. It's so no. I Islam is basically telling you to take away the focus from thinking of the amount of pain you're enduring to think of an echa, to think about the value. It's redirecting your mind and its focus. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was always redirecting you from looking at the loss to looking at the gain, from looking at the pain to looking at all the um, all the beautiful things that you will gain in the akhirah. And it's always redirecting your focus. That's why in one of the lectures I gave mindfulness in Islam, and I was really talking about how the names of attributes and of, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was redirecting you from looking at, for example, the, the illness to looking at Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as giving you cure from looking at um, the, the, the loss or at least the failure to looking at Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as the one to give you success. So it's redirecting your focus. That's the whole thing. It's shifting how you look at certain things to shifting your focus into look at the success look at the gain, look at the power, not looking at yourself as becoming more vulnerable and weaker, but looking at yourself as getting stronger. That instead of seeing yourself, oh, I'm getting weaker with the heat. I want you to look at yourself that I'm getting stronger in faith, not strong, weaker in body, but I want you to look at stronger in faith redirecting yeah, subhanallah and that that you know we just got through ramadan and exactly so, yeah yeah that just wraps it up subhanallah yeah so instead of you know looking at redefine what it means to be stronger redefine what it means to be more stable redefine what it means to be um to be in support it's all about redefining things. That's why even Islam, it redefined for, for us what it means to be free. Redefined for us what it means to be free. It's not to be free is not to basically reduce from the clothes, but to be free is to increase in value. To be free is basically to be free from all those that are redefining what it means to be free to actually have a lost product and redefine what it means to be free. It's redefining everything. Because if you actually look at what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was always bringing in the redefinition in the Quran. It's redefining for you what it means to be ethical, redefining that for you, what it means to be a person of a person of faith, in where it's redefining all the different definitions that people have contaminated and misdefined. If you would, you know, if 
yeah, Bard wouldn't like the word misdefined, or um, let's use a different word and where it's the wrong identification, the wrong definition. So it's re-recognizing what it means to be free. What it means to be free is free from people designing the clothes and the definition of living for your body to living for spirit to living for a law to living for value that's more important than living for body than living for image than living for people being content to how you appear then it's living not for the appearance, not for the body, but living for the soul, but living for value. That's true freedom. That's true maturity. It's redirecting your vision from seeing the body, from seeing materialistic definitions to seeing spiritual visions to seeing visions that grow beyond people that grow beyond materialism and would embrace spirituality divine and high value that's what it means it's redirecting your vision that's what ramadan is all about it's helping you grow and embrace not the pain, but enduring the pain to get to the gain of spiritual cultivation. So that's basically the training. How do you endure all of that? It takes patience. It takes endurance. It takes practice. You might fall. It's okay. It's okay. The problem is not in falling. Because we'll all fall. The problem is in staying on the ground. That's the problem. Oh, yeah, like getting back up again. Exactly. Get up, back up again. The problem is staying on the floor. It's okay to trip and fall. Sometimes you, you wear hijab and then a month later, you'll find yourself taking it off again. And then you're like, okay, I took it off already. No, no, it's okay. Well, Try it back on again. Yeah, it can happen. And you'll trip again and take it off again. And it's an issue of training. You'll get yourself back on. It's okay. You'll basically, the Prophet ﷺ actually said, The Prophet ﷺ said, if you did not make sin, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would have actually brought in a new generation, a new group of people that would make sin and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness. You committed a sin. That's not the end of it. As long as you're still breathing, as long as you're still alive, as long as you're still repenting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that's what matters. Don't let shaitan tell you that there's no room for hope. You will fall. You will commit sin. The problem is not only in committing sin, but the problem is giving up. Continue. Grow. Be consistent. Learn how to be consistent. Even when you had your downfalls. Continue. Shaitan will come and tell you, you know you made the sin. You know you gave up on it several times. You're never going to be strong again. You're not ever going to be able to do it. It's boring, etc. No, take and wash away that shaitan and the thoughts that shaitan is spewing in your mind and be strong and come back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not close the door as long as you're coming in to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's basically what you want to do. Continue. Never stop. Come back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Say, Ya Allah, I'm coming back. I turned my I turned away at one point, but I'm coming back. Come back. Don't leave. The door is still open. The place is still looking for more people 
that want to enter Jannah. And that's basically what we want to turn to. That's basically what we want to work and put the effort in becoming better and better Muslims by the day Ramadan would come in in order to teach us. Remember that ASAP that we started out at times and where that ASAP and where putting in what putting in ASAP. Yes, it's not as soon as possible, but it's basically teaching us life is taking, putting the spiritual engagement, allocate an amount of time for the kid, prioritize Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and certainly that's what the whole idea of Ramadan was all about. It's teaching you how to put in a sap all in place, prioritizing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to put in what Ramadan was all about. You see it? I hope we all understood what Ramadan was all about. And I hope we're all capable of learning how to get the package in our lives to grow in our deen from one Ramadan to the other in where, inshallah, we will grow from the level of being Muslim to the level of being mu'min to the level of being muttaqi and finally to the level of being muhsin. Allahumma amin. So, um, I hope I answered that. Yes, Allah. So, Allah So we'll end in Allah. Subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdik. Nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk. Nashhadu an la ilaha illa ant. Munira, you still want to say something, dear? No, I'm just letting everything marinate. You know. <laughs> Allah ibarik fiki. Matina, I love your name, girl. I would definitely want to hear you because <laughs> Matina means strong. It means it's solid. And yeah, girl, I would like to hear what you're going to say. Allah make me strong, Ya Rab. Amin, Ya Rabbi. Jazakallah khair fi biti. Salam alaykum wa wa barakatuh. Wa alaykum as -salam. Nothing better than actually ending with a name, Matina. Matina, strong, <laughs> stable, and somebody that has endured, that had endured all the hardships. Matina, can't beat that, can we, right? <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Amin, Ya Rabbi. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make her always and make us always Matina, strong, Amen. capable of enduring, and yes, stable and durable. If anybody would like to say anything, I'm here listening to all of you. I mean, I don't have anything to say, but, you know, I, when you were, like, talking, I was just remembering the lecture, like, you did one time, like, about dhikr, mm -hmm. and I wasn't, like, so good with doing dhikr, and, like, I was just thinking, like, how, like, what you say, like, it's, you know, like, it's, like, so true, you know, because after listening to that lecture, like, I tried doing, and honestly, I was having a hard time, and I was like, oh, my God, what did Dr. Aisha say about, you were saying, like, you know, even if you're struggling, like it has no effect, just like keep going. Mm -hmm. And subhanAllah, that was like months ago. And, you know, and Ramadan came and everything. And now that I do look back, I can say like, you know, by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, like I've really kind of like gotten like better at it, you know? Like it's not just so blank, like the way it was, you know? Mashallah. Right, right. Yeah. And in the beginning, it would feel like you said, it would feel blank. It would feel like, what is this? It, it's it's kind of like this. In the beginning, it just feels like your tongue is saying the words. You don't feel it in your heart. It isn't until you master it, where it vibrates from a word that your tongue is saying to a word that is vibrating in your heart. 
that's the beginning. In the beginning, subhanAllah just feels like, okay, it's so heavy on my tongue. It's so heavy, but it isn't until it starts vibrating deeper and deeper to reaching your heart. And then it reaches something else in your heart. It's called the fu'ad. The heart in your body is actually different levels. Maybe I could actually draw that. In the Quran, here's the body. I want to look at it. In the Quran, it basically gives you like there's the mouth and the mouth is saying something and then there's the part that is the heart which is basically what the Quran would use as a sadr chest but then when it talks about a level where it touches deeper place in the heart it uses the word fu'ad which is the core of the heart so when it's outside the heart, it basically uses the word sadr, chest, but then it goes deeper, fu'ad. And that's why it would basically tell you that dhikr, yes, they would use the dhikr, but then it would tell you once they master dhikr, that it would go from a word of mouth to vibrating in the sadr. And once the sadr masters it, then it starts vibrating in the core of the heart. That is only when the person would basically feel the nur, the light of that dhikr, where they would feel it, that it has gone from a word of mouth to a word that their heart is starting to see the glimpse of iman, the glimpse of light. That's They start seeing the glimpse of light only when it reaches the chest. But once it goes inside il fuad they would find the beauty of that light that they would not want to leave because there's nothing like it they I'm would not. just endure it that they would just when they would say the word of dhikr their eyes are pouring in tears of happiness you know, think of it as that dopamine that really had gotten so deep, so deep in their hearts that they're finding in that vicar the beauty of entertainment that nothing they would find equal to such beauty of Iman. And these people... Remember and think of that triangle. These people, when they're at this level, the other people are thinking about them. They're boring, boring. And that's why the Salihin used to say, by Allah, if the kings and the queens and the princes would have known the beauty of Iman, the beauty of entertainment that we're finding from dhikr, from qiyam al they would have come and fought us with their swords to take it away from us. Why? Because for a king and a queen and all these people in such levels of entertainment to people, these millionaires are finding all the beauty. But the truth of the matter is that they recognize it, that such found that that such founded entertainment is just temporary. They recognize that, but the kings and the queens, if they would have found the beauty of Iman that these people have been finding in this stage, all the those people that are millionaires and whatever, they'd be like, there's the happiness. Why didn't we find it? Why? Because true happiness is not, here's the thing, as human beings, we would think that by containing more of dunya, that that might actually make us feel more satisfied. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us that the true satisfaction is really on the inside. You know, these people are, you know, trying to feed more of dunya, trying to get more of the outside. And then 
they would think that they're searching for dunya somewhere, maybe on the top of a hill, maybe in some level of some kind of a weird, funny place on some place in the world. But then they don't recognize that true happiness actually lies within the light of your heart. That's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's the only place of Iman. Yes, you're searching for it, but that's way inside. It's your dhikr. It's your level of Iman that you would cultivate on the inside. So that's where it is. That's what you want to find. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it easy and told you, Verily, in the name and the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that's where hearts find content. That's hearts where hearts would find happiness. That's where they would find the dopamine. That's where they were find all the beautiful light. It's inside. You're looking at the wrong place if you're looking elsewhere. Dhikr is your key. Continue. You'll find it right there in the core of your heart. That's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us amongst those, to make us those that will endure the moments of pain in order to gain and find the light of dhikr and find the light to iman and find the light of virtue and find the light of la ilaha illallah and find the door to Jannah, beautiful place of Jannah. That's what we want to all gather in. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gather us there. Rabbi hafadhku jami'an. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, just as he gathered us at this right there reminder, gather us in Jannah. Gather us together at the high level of Jannah to see the nur of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allahumma Amen. Amen. Noura, you want to end something? You want to say something, dear? Oh, me? Oh, I forgot I was on. SubhanAllah. <laughs> that's sorry. That's <laughs> I'm there, love. Yutandi is here, Sayida uh, Rabia is here, Matina, Fatima, oh, Fatima Bell, long time, didn't hear from her, Daniel Collins, oh, I love that girl, always sending me things on Facebook, Aisha, Suba, Matina, all of you, uh, Zaboon, I'm proud of all of you, Rabbi Yafadhu Jami'an, and if Munira, you want to say something, dear, go ahead. No, I don't. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> All right, we'll see you all tomorrow, inshallah. And I'm glad you were all here. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.